Plumbing codes use various methods to determine the size of the water piping feeding a building. One of those methods is to use fixture units. To figure water supply fixture units, you need to calculate the demand load that plumbing fixtures will place on a water supply system. Here are the steps required to size domestic water mains and distribution piping along with how to determine fixture units and the volume of water required. Step number one, figuring total water supply fixture units, WSFUs. Identify the different types of plumbing fixtures that will be connected to the water supply system. Examples of common fixtures include toilets, sinks, bathtubs, showers, dishwashers, and washing machines. We'll use a three-story office building for our example. Here we show that each floor has four water closets, three urinals, and three lavatories. Determine the water supply fixture unit value of each type of fixture. Water supply fixture units, WSFU, is a measure of the flow rate of water through a specific fixture. The WSFU of a fixture can be found in the plumbing code or by consulting a plumbing engineer. Here we show several different codes and the various tables they use for fixture unit values. Each code will have a procedure for calculating the required flow rates based on the type and quantity of fixtures. Here we use the 2021 International Plumbing Code Table E103.3.2 for our example. The table shows that a public lavatory has 1.5 fixture units and a public urinal with a three quarter inch flushometer valve has five fixture units and a plumbing water closet with flushometer valve has 10 fixture units. Multiply the WSFU of each fixture by the number of fixtures of that type. This calculation will give you the total fixture units WSFUs for each fixture type. For example, there are three lavatories per floor times three floors, which equals a total of nine lavatories. And based on 1.5 WSFU each, there would be a total of 13.5 fixture units for the lavatories. There are also a total of nine urinals with a value of five fixture units each. The total fixture units for all the urinals are nine times five equals 45. Then there are four water closets per floor times three floors for a total of 12 water closets. The WSFU for a water closet with a flushometer valve is 10, which would give us 12 times 10 equals 120 fixture units. Add up the WSFUs for all fixtures in the building or plumbing system to get the total WSFUs for that system. This will include adding up the total fixture units for each branch and riser. What we haven't considered is any water flow demands for cooling towers, RO systems, process equipment, or landscaping. The plumbing engineer will need to work with the other trades to determine their needs for water. In our example, we have a total of 13.5 WSFUs for lavatories, 45 for urinals, and 120 fixture units for water closets for a total of 178.5 fixture units. Step number two, determine the water flow, GPM or liters per minute. Determining the water flow involves finding the total water supply fixture units in the very left column of IPC table 103.33, then moving along that row to the intersection of the demand column for supply systems for flushometer valves. The total fixture units are close enough to 180 so the use of this row is fine. This gives us a water flow of 85.5 GPM or 323.6 liters per minute. Step number three, obtain minimum daily static pressure available. The available static pressure in PSI or KPA at the water meter or source of water supply is provided by the city or local water authority. 
the minimum pressure is used in the calculation to ensure that during peak water usage season, pressure is available to operate the most demanding fixture. Peak water usage usually occurs in summer when landscaping systems are maximized and water-based cooling systems are utilized at their peak. It is essential that sufficient water pressure be available to overcome all the plumbing water system losses due to friction and elevation so that plumbing fixtures operate properly. Step number four, pressure loss due to building height. To get the flow of water needed for the building, there needs to be enough pressure left over after subtracting for all of the losses that occur due to various reasons. The first is the height of the building. Water exerts a pressure of 0.433 pounds per square inch for every one foot in height, or 9.81 kilopascals per meter. The pressure coming from the city will be reduced by the loss occurred from this column of water sitting in the pipe risers feeding the building. In our example, the building is three stories high and has a 35 foot 10.6 meter riser. To determine the loss of pressure from this column of water, the following equation is used. Riser height in feet, meters, times pressure loss per foot, meter, 35 feet times 0 0.433 equals 15.2 PSI or 10.6 meters times 9.81 kilopascals equal 105 kilopascals. Step number five, minimum pressure required at remote fixture. This is to ensure that the fixture has enough pressure to operate properly. Each fixture requires different amounts of pressure to operate. So it's important to pick the remote fixture that requires the greatest pressure to produce a flow. Using IPC table 604.3, the siphonic water closet with a flushometer valve needs 35 PSI or 241 kPa for proper operation. Step number six, pressure loss through water meter. The friction loss or pressure loss through the water meter can be found from the manufacturer of the water meter. In our example, we'll use six PSI or 41 kPa for the pressure loss through the meter. Step number seven, pressure loss through backflow preventer. The use of a reduced pressure backflow assembly RPZ is to prevent dirty water from reversing flow and contaminating the clean water supply. If required, then the pressure drop needs to be included in the calculation for total pressure loss. In our example, the pressure drop is 4 PSI or 28 kPa. Step number eight, pressure loss through pressure regulating valve. The IPC restricts excessive water pressure by requiring a pressure regulating valve when the pressure exceeds 80 PSI, 552 kPa. The reason is to reduce the incident of water hammer, reduce the excessive loss of water from pressure relief valves, and for the protection of equipment and fixtures. Since the maximum water supply in our example is less than this, there is no need for a PRV. Step number nine, total pressure required for operation. Add up all the pressure losses and the required minimum water pressure at a remote fixture with the highest requirements. Adding steps number four through number eight in our example equals 60.2 PSI or 415 kPa. This is the total pressure required for proper operation, but not including the required pressure drop caused by the water flowing through the pipe and fittings. Step number 10, pressure available for friction loss. Subtract all the losses in step number nine from the minimum available pressure in step number three. If the available pressure is 70 PSI or 482 kPa, then our calculation looks like this. 70 PSI minus 60.2 PSI equals 9.8 PSI or 482 kPa minus 450 kPa equals 67 kPa. This is the amount of pressure left over for the resistance to flow that is needed to move the required GPM or LPM to the most remote fixture. 
Steps number 11 and 12, total developed length of piping. This is the developed length of water piping between the water source and the most remote fixture times 1.5 to account for pressure loss through fittings and valves. Fittings and valves add 50% to your total length, but this could vary based on design. In the example here, there is a total of 140 feet or 42.6 meters from the water source to the most remote fixture. The calculation would be 140 feet times 1.5 equals 210 feet or 42.6 meters times 1.5 equals 63.9 meters of total developed length. If you know the exact amount of fittings and valves, then table E103.36 in the IPC could be used to determine the equivalent length for each size and type of fitting or valve. Step number 13, determine the friction loss per 100 feet. This calculation determines the leftover pressure in the system that can be used to overcome the pressure loss due to friction in the pipes and fittings. Step number 9 shows that there is 9.8 PSI or 67 kPa for friction loss. The calculation would be 9.8 divided by 210 feet times 100 equals 4.7 PSI per 100 feet. Step number 14, determine size of water service pipe. This is where the size of the main is determined using the information that we have put together so far. Using figure 103.33, we enter the total GPM of 85.5 and our allowable pressure drop of 4.7 PSI per 100 feet, and they intersect just above the two inch pipe line. So to be safe, we'll specify a two and a half inch or 65 millimeter pipe. If we found out through our analysis that there wasn't enough water pressure from the city to overcome all of the pressure losses and provide the minimum required pressure at the most remote plumbing fixture, then a booster pump would be considered. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.